My name is um, uh, Natasha Dietmopoulou. I am a psychiatrist. I work uh, with refugees since August 2016. I work uh, in a program funded by UNHCR, which is called Relocation Scheme Project. And uh, I will start by saying who is a refugee. Um, a refugee is someone who has been forced to flee his or her country because of per persecution, war, or violence. A refugee has a well-founded fear of persecution for reasons of race, religion, nationality, political opinion, or membership in a particular social group. Most likely, they cannot return home or are afraid to do so. War and ethnic, tribal, and religious violence are leading causes of refugees fleeing their countries. Some very few statistics from UNHCR from 2015. About 65.3 million people have been forced from home around the world. Among them are nearly 21.3 million refugees over half of whom are under the age of 18. There are also 10 million stateless people who have been denied a nationality and access to basic rights such as education, health care, employment, and freedom of movement. Um, nearly 34,000 people are forcibly displaced every day as a result of conflict or persecution. In Europe now, 49,000, almost 50,000 people have risked their lives to reach Europe by sea so far in 2017, and um, 1,344 fear drones so far in 2017. The numbers are huge. So about my job, what we are doing in Athens, we're two medical teams. There is pediatrician, internist, uh, gynecologist, uh, psychiatrist, and psychologist. Um, both the teams work for this program. Uh, it has been renamed. It began as relocation, and now it is an accommodation program because many of the refugees um, have uh, will stay here, will stay in Greece. Um, the first team where I belong is located at the Medical Center of Patricia in Athens. We receive referrals from our program. We have almost 1,600 people, adults and children, located in apartments in Athens, as well as from other uh, NGOs and organizations such as RC, Solidarity Now, and Doctors Without Borders. People who we treat live either in apartments or in camps. For example, the referrals from the Doctors Without Borders come mostly from camps. All of them are adults, um, and uh, there is no significant number difference between men and women as, as far as the uh, psychological support and psychiatric disorders are concerned. Populations come mostly from Syria, Afghanistan, Iraq, Iran, and much fewer from Africa and Palestinians as well. The most violent narrations come from Iraq. There is war in Syria, but uh, the, the conditions in Iraq are, there are no words to describe what we hear. Uh, mass execution, systematic rape, and um, horrendous acts of violence are widespread in Iraq, human rights and rule of law are under constant attack. So what are the challenges when we work with refugee population? Challenges and difficulties at the same time. So first of all, we have the refugee barriers, OK? Um, they have difficulties to seek out services. There is stigma um, around mental health. They tell me uh, quite often, they used to tell me that uh, in their countries only the crazy go to the psychiatrist. Um, then there is a distrust of uh, authority and systems of care because they, they are they're suspicious because they have, they have to deal with so many difficulties during the journey. 
so they do not trust easily the system. Uh, the families recognize that there are many problems, psychological, but they have to deal with other resettlement stressors like housing, employment, and uh, they believe that uh, these issues are much more important than go to the psychiatrist. They are uh, not very well informed of services, and the truth is that the referral networks are limited. The language is um, a huge problem. Parents and children are not proficient in English, of course, and the role of interpreter is vital. We'll talk about this uh, a little later. Then there are difficulties um, yeah, at expressing feelings. Uh, they need psychoeducation um, as far as um, recognizing and expressing emotions. Um, and they are unfamiliar with psychiatric disorders, of course. Um, there are also many cultural barriers. For example, during the month of Ramadan, um, which starts in a few days, I think tomorrow, no, on Saturday, they don't want to visit the doctors because um, they don't want to talk. Um, then they have, um, they, they, then there are other uh, things such as um, stereotypes. They, they often um, tell me that, you know, back to my country, the drug users get in prison. <clears throat> so they, they, they have uh, difficulty to uh, open the, th <clears throat> excuse me, to open the issue of um, drug or alcohol abuse. Um, and alcohol use, for example, is forbidden by the religion. Um, it, is the, it is forbidden, but quite often there is misuse of uh, alcohol. Um, cultural practices such as violence against women is accepted uh, by Muslims. So, societies by, so domestic violence is difficult to be revealed. Um, the difference between a psychologist, what the psychologist does, and what the psychiatrist does is totally unclear. And uh, now the difficulties, difficulties, the barriers uh, as far as the assessment is concerned. First of all, the cultural validity, how closely concepts in a questionnaire, for example, match local concepts. Uh, most of the times, Western concepts may not apply locally. Unknown local concepts, um, they might be very important, but uh, I'm not aware of them. So, how can I include uh, questions? I don't know. I should be ask, I should be asking, or how to include the question? Thank you. Or how to include the question um, in a not insulting way? For example, the uh, the alcohol use. Uh, it is. Uh, it is a very important uh, question when um, we examine uh, a person, but um, sometimes the interpreter, for example, has difficulties to ask because it is thought that if somebody is Muslim, that means he or she never drinks, um, especially towards women. The, this question is quite difficult, especially to, to, towards women. And of course, the translation problems, who translates? So the interpreter's role is uh, vital, is very important. Um, I have written here an example, which I find it really interesting. Um, during examination with a drug addicted person, the interpreter told me that he could not, he could not ask the person if he has uh, suicide thoughts because he couldn't bear the question and do would cry, the interpreter would cry. Um, the interpreter often replies instead of the person who is examined. Um, the refugee builds a personal relationship with the interpreter. Quite often he, she asks for interpreter's trust, trust by saying, I will tell you something, I will tell you a secret, <clears throat> but do not tell it to the doctor, please. The interpreters are not always well trained, especially for mental health issues. There are many difficulties. For instance, the word support cannot be sufficiently translated in Arabic. So they have to describe it. Um, I would also like to 
to add here that um, um, many things we uh, believe as doctors, as psychiatrists, that are clear are totally unclear for uh, for refugees. Uh, for example, the simple question, how do you sleep, how is your sleep? It can be uh, quite complicated because they do not understand this. You have to explain, um, <clears throat> when I ask you how do you sleep, I mean, do you sleep the whole, day, the whole night? Um, do you wake up early in the morning? Uh, do you feel tired? You have to do many questions because it, they will um, simply tell you, Tamam, it's okay, um, everything is fine with my sleep, but they do not sleep well. So, um, most of them, uh, when they, um, they reach a psychiatrist, uh, ask for a people to forget or sleep. They do not understand the importance of adherence. They feel better, they stop taking the medication. This is a rule. Others believe that medication is addictive or will make them sleep. Now, practical issues that uh, such as medication is not easily affordable, and we have to look for uh, whatever we can um, at social pharmacies. Follow-ups, um, one appointment is enough. Difficulty at keeping uh, stability at follow-ups. Um, they believe it's okay, I've seen the psychiatrist once, I feel better, that's enough. Um, it takes much more time to establish a therapeutic uh, relation, but it continues to be very important. So, um, as far as the, um, the disorders, the psychiatric disorders and the symptoms, uh, the stress from the instability, in addition to the trauma they already experience, means that refugees are particularly vulnerable to mental disorders. The most common are depression, depression, PTSD, anxiety disorders, sleep disorders, psychosis, personality disorders, alcohol abuse, and of course, suicidal attempts. So, um, this is um, a case. It's not something, um, something we don't see in Greece or in Europe, but it's interesting as far as the cultural um, uh, thing is concerned. Uh, Amira is a young woman, around 30 years old, old, from Syria. She lives in Athens with her mother, one younger sister, who is married with two little, little children, but her husband has taken the children away from her to punish her. And the niece, they are in Athens of, for a few months, I think five or six months, and uh, they're going to leave Athens, to leave Greece for Germany. The father of the, of the family has passed away a long time ago. The rest of brothers and sisters live in Germany. The three women and the niece have been accepted to Germany and their journey, journey will take place soon. Amira suffers from schizophrenia diagnosed at the age of 15 years old. Um, there might be also a kind of developmental disability as well, undiagnosed though. The girl was a bad pupil. She used to have a lot of outbursts and was negative to any medication. Her mother, that's the interesting thing, her mother has told me that at the beginning of the disorder, and as it is common practice in Syria, she consulted a local healer who tied Amira up with chains a bit, and beat her um, as, it's, as it is the ritual. Uh, the mother eventually asked for professional help and the girl received some kind of treatment. When that first came to me, she has been suspicious and not cooperative. She didn't want to take any medication. She was even hostile. After several appointments and follow-ups, we managed to establish a good relationship. She now takes olanzapine, okay, 20 milligrams. She asks for her pill and remains stable. This is quite characteristic that uh, in Syria, psychiatric, psychiatric disorders like schizophrenia are still thought to be, uh, are still treated um, in a way that uh, we only read in books. So as conclusions, um, mental health support in the refugees is often neglected. Uh, in the current refugee crisis, with tens of thousands of desperate and exhausted refugees attempting to reach safe havens in Europe, 
mental health and psychosocial well-being is somewhat overlooked uh, amid all the needs that are crying for attention, says Peter Fentefogel, uh, who is Senior Mental Health Officer at UN Refugee Agency. Yeah. I think this is quite important that these people, refugees, are not psychologically weak. Most of them uh, we meet have traveled for one year or more before landing in Greece, so one year of danger, of dangerous situation. The stressful wait during the months after arrival is often when trauma takes shape. The past comes back, the present is difficult, the future is uncertain. People sometimes arrive in good, good mental health and become increasingly depressed as the months wear on. Perhaps the most important thing to do is to treat refugees with respect and dignity, preserving and strengthening their autonomy and self-efficacy. And uh, to... Uh, and one, more, one last thing, we are facing the biggest refugee and displacement crisis of our time. Above all, this is not just a crisis of numbers, it is also a crisis of solidarity. Thank you very much for your attention.